Good afternoon. Thank you very much to IEDC and this panel for having the opportunity to speak with them. Um, for the last uh, 12, 13 years, I've been in Wisconsin working for the city of Madison for a decade in the University of Wisconsin Platteville for the last year and a half or so. And uh, what you're going to hear about is something that I worked with uh, uh, a very smart engineer that actually could talk to people and teach. And I mean, I've worked for an engineering company for seven years, and it's very rare to have a gift of an engineer that's extremely smart and that can communicate and convince and inspire people in a public forum like this gentleman that you're going to hear about today. And to be honest with you, what I want to really stress is maker spaces are about technology and networking, but they're also about who runs the facility, who is the face, excuse me, who is the face, who is the in inspirer of the whole facility, and, and how they get the word on, how they network, how they create that vibe. And I think it's extremely, what's that? I think it's extremely important that the face of the organization is, is very duly noted. Okay. Um, here's a couple realities. Uh, the average 15 year, uh, average graduate today is going to work for 15 different companies between now and when they graduate, you know, by the time they hit 35. Starting something new is extremely exciting and it's cool. It's a Zuckerberg effect. effect. Applied education is something that I'm talking about today, or experiential learning, is the way children are learning these days, adult children as well. And when you learn to ride a bike by reading it in a book, and I tell you, when you can put somebody in front of something and have them create it themselves, it's very inspiring. It adds to a lot of things. One of the biggest troubles about an inventor that has an idea is the doing part. It's the getting it off of the, out of the head or out of the paper and into the actual physical realm, if you will. And that's what makerspaces are really about. Um, tinkerers, in my opinion, they used to think that they needed to be in their basements and in their garages and be left alone so they could tinker. I tell you, uh, the things that have happened at Sector 67 in Madison as a result of getting these people out of these places and putting them in interaction in, in an interactive environment has been huge. Um, and to my own mind, is fabricating. Uh, it's come to the masses through hackerspaces. Um, hackerspaces, uh, makerspaces have many names as you can see there in the varieties, do-it-yourself space, co-working, uh, <coughs> excuse me, prototype um, contract shops if you will. Um, they can be for-profit, non-for-profit, they can be coming out of academia, they can be coming out of a private sector. For, um, there's one that I toured in uh, Seattle, Spokane, and Portland that's amazing uh, by a HVAC contractor that's now into innovation. Um, and in hackerspaces uh, that are involved with academia, they're, they're associated with proof of concept centers. Uh, the technology in Sector 67 that I want to briefly talk about is, is all listed right here. Um, this is not an extremely fancy space. This is a space that, you know, they, the, the gentleman that runs it has saved this equipment over time, that has purchased used equipment that has been safe and is in the disposal issue and could be, you know, utilized in a very productive fashion. These are some of the major equipment uh, items that are there right now that they use. This facility has every tool that you need to manufacture something out of plastic, woods, and metals. It has an art shop. It has an electronic lab in order for if you need to put a chip on something to make something work. It has Lego land where you can actually create a prototype, a kiln, a, a pottery wheel, and various other technologies that, that, that are being used to create things in prototype form. <clears throat> um, just to, oh shoot. Go back here. Um, Okay, here, access. You can go there uh, pretty much uh, 8, 9 in the morning till 8, 9 at night and hang out for free. Uh, they encourage people to go there and listen and learn. Membership is 50 bucks a month if you're a student, 100 bucks a month if you're not a student. The way I look at it is you go to the workout club, you know, the, the, the Shake Fitness, you pay 50 bucks to work, work out your body, you pay 50 to 100 bucks here to go work out your mind. Um, they have an incubator space, in fact, that wasn't originally planned and evolved. 200 bucks a month. 
and uh, you have your own personal space. You can, you know, the suite is locked, so you have some form of safety. Um, one thing about membership is be thoughtful, be open to everybody, but also realize that you have heavy equipment in this room and liabilities, so be thoughtful of the individuals that you are bringing in. Um, there are trial periods and things like that that you can use for if you have an interesting person that you're not quite sure is going to be the greatest on a CNC machine that could take off his or her hand. Uh, security issues, uh, they were mentioned earlier, um, but there are things that you must consider. Outreach, um, like I mentioned before, individuals that don't have access to campus facilities, or tinkers, um, teaching chemistry through banking. I was there one time and I saw 10 year olds in, in learning about banking, learning, you know, they're cooking cookies, but while they're there, these young 10 year old girls are learning about chemistry, convection, you know, things like that that you can, you know, stand as far as that's what you need to do. Um, Here's an example of a product, portable scoreboard. This was invented there. Fits in a backpack. It went to Hexel Raider, which is one of the facilities that Jim mentioned. It was over in Sichuan, China. Um, didn't win the competition, but competed. Um, this was invented by a Green Bay person that came to Madison and used Sector 67 to create a prototype that's now coming. Here's another event, uh, 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 product that came out of there on the entrepreneurship side. Simple, intuitive, durable, and expensive hardware for authenticating point of purchases. You put your phone up to something that the seller has and it records it. Um, this Klaus uh, Mosberg has, has graduated. Obviously, he's got his own office, eight employees. Um, he's raised over half a million dollars for this company. Um, they came in with this idea, Sector 67 put together a team, within two hours they had a prototype, and uh, you know, by the end of the day they were showing something to investors. It happened that quickly. Here's another one. This is an artist student that came out of Milwaukee. She needed a place to figure out how to pour the actual mold for a cast iron pan. She makes hands in the shape of the state. Well, she's from Wisconsin. Um, obviously, you can see the right, the picture of the, you know, the, the, well, let's just say she started with Wisconsin after she got going. Uh, she also raised money on Kickstart, $6,000. Um, and then the next thing you know, she's competing in uh, New York City for American-made competition sponsored by Martha Stewart. The display on the left is her and Martha in front of everyone that she poured um, for every state in the union. There they are pouring. Down there in the, south, in the lower left hand corner is the Wisconsin frying pan, which is where she's from. Here's a couple other innovative facilities that I want to talk about briefly, just Noise Bridge and Tech Shop in San Francisco. Uh, Jim mentioned Tech Shop. Bucket Works in Milwaukee, they had a creative thing where they'd actually employ artists at their hacker space to teach inventors how to do an elevator pitch. You can be as creative as you want with these things. McKinstry Innovation Centers in Seattle, Spokane, and Portland are amazing. Um, these, these are on the high end. This is not, they're not bootstrapping anything like we are in Madison. The plant in Chicago is interesting because that matrix on the bottom is basically how they created about five or six businesses that are all interrelated. Now it's not a hackerspace, so to speak, but it's a manufacturing facility that had a different creative use, and I would suggest that you check that out as well. That picture in the lower left-hand corner was taken by Sector 67. They came to my campus in Clackville, an hour west of Madison. They launched a spaceship in a competition. It got up to, the competition was get something up to uh, 75,000 square, uh, 75,000 feet above the Earth's surface. Photograph it for under 100 bucks. That's the picture that was taken from that spacecraft launched in Clackville for under 100 bucks. It landed just due east of Madison. They learned the second time. The first time they sent it off from Platinum from Madison, and it ended up in Lake Michigan. Thank God somebody found it floating in, like, you know, the old original days in the 1960s, floating in the middle of the ocean. Um, they had their phone number on it, they called, and they went and picked it up. But that was taken from the cell phone. That's a CD mounted on the outside of their spaceship. They do creative things. 90, 95 
of a hundred things that they're going to work on at this educational facility. It's going to be creative, fun, funny, whatever. It's not going to lead to a business, but three, maybe two or three or five of them, five years from now, are going to be companies that have jobs. Maybe one is $20 million in sales and employs 30 people. These are, these are really innovative spe spaces that I, you never know what's going to happen. That photograph up in the upper right was the Innovations, uh, was a Maker Faire car. They went to Detroit, they won the competition. Uh, Maker Faire, as we discussed by him. What I'm going to talk about now is, is this Sector 67 creative space, we're trying to duplicate in rural Wisconsin. Now we're west, is a university, 8,000 students, really strong in engineering. They, um, they don't, it's an undergraduate teaching institution. But their children, the, the students, go to Madison to the Creative Commons, the UW Madison competitions, and win. Why don't we do this in Platform? There's great ideas in rural America. Let's figure out a way to capitalize on it. So that's what we're trying to do with an innovation center, and we want to take the hacker space, maker space, and make, make it a component of the innovation center. You can see all of these spaces up there, the gray areas are the MSAs. You know, the one to the right of the area is, is Madison. They have like 12, 15 incubators. Rockford, Iger Lab that Jim mentioned is in Rockford. But the red box areas are basically deserts of innovation. There are no facilities for entrepreneurship and innovation at this level. So Blackville in the middle of it all, 20 minutes from Dubuque, the number one city in America under 100,000 last year, wants to do something about it. So this is what we're working on. It's basically facilitates the expression of new ideas, products, and services, cross-discipline, get the kids out of the silos, get artists working next to engineers, working next to sociologists, figure out ways to create new products and be entrepreneurs. Um, these are the, you know, these are the things that happen inside of uh, hacker spaces. And I know I don't have a ton of time. Here's the innovation center for physical space outline, 30,000 square feet. The hacker space would be about three to 6,000 square feet. Next to a student incubator, that is about 3,000 square feet. So getting these students, meeting with business students and innovative students. Um, artists, huge. We want to actually integrate our, in rural, rural Platteville, our innovation center and hacker space with the STEAM STEM and agriculture charter school at the public high school. So either they have a physical space inside the innovation center or their classes are taught at the innovation center using the hacker space. Get these kids connected to these technologies. Children are learning by doing. We saw this morning in the ethics conference or in the ethics session that 20, in 1940, 20% of students cheated. Today it's 75% of students are cheating. Get them learning by doing things. Get them learning by experiential learning and getting their hands dirty and challenging them. And this is a way to do it. Oh shoot. This thing goes too fast. Um, one of the things that we're focused on too is, is not foundational or basic research, it's applied research. It's anything that's an idea that can get to market in 12 months or less. And these are some of the industry sectors that we focused on. Uh, this is your innovation, regional innovation system. It shows how you can access the facility as a tenant, as a member, um, similar to some parts of incubators and things like that. But it's also community space. This is how we're integrating all of the educational and workforce development extension entities, as well as the traditional economic development partners um, together. And uh, obviously, these are the standard benefits, great jobs, New housing construction, increased tax base, excuse me. Um, you know, we also want to fill that desert with innovation and things like that. This is the facility as, as we know it right now uh, on the current site that we hope to, to secure in the next uh, three to six months. Uh, it's about $8.5 million facility, and these are the things that we have to do. I think, you know, bottom line is the real point of my, my, my discussion today is these hacker spaces can be bootstrapped. These hacker spaces do really well when they're educational focused. They can be the best place to go for a competition. Um, for students, we had one student trying to figure out a way to build a ramp that would have a marble fall down at the slowest. We've had uh, this 
$100 swap shop competition for any student from UW Madison can go to the swap shop, which is a place where they discard all the things they don't need anymore for 100 bucks. Whoever creates the best innovation wins $10,000 or something for under $100. And they all go to the Sector 67 place for, for, for use of their technology and facilities. Um, they host the creative funds where you go there on a Saturday at noon and by Sunday, you, you know, Saturday afternoon, you've pitched your idea, you form a team, and you have a prototype created within 24 hours. They make awards for all of those things. So, I mean, this educational, creative, you know, flexible but focused development of technologies around things that they're good at and the technology that they have, um, ability to bootstrap by, by used equipment, get donated parts and raw materials from factories that are going to landfill them and you use them for creating products, the community space, all of these things are very possible. And, then, and, 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 and I think in Sector 67 they're possible because they have an individual that was an entrepreneur and a mechanical engineer entered every business plan and entrepreneurial competition during his undergraduate and graduate days. Saved all of that money, saved all of the equipment that he got he purchased over time and he created this space that is, is just the extent, I mean it's over six and a half thousand square feet now as of last week in two and a half years um, and I hope the city in my absence now finds a new place for him so he can be twice that size and such a community asset. The tag kids are going there, all the ones that want to play and get things out of their mind, it's a happening place and I think you know if we did it in Madison and we're going to do it in Platform it can be done anywhere. And obviously, from what we've seen, it is being done so. So thank you very much.